This is Geometry, Semester 2, and it's a unit on Rigid Motions Review, number 11, and it's the unit in there, I mean the lesson in there, number 1, called Symmetry, Reflections, Translations, Etc. Practice. It's on creatormath.com. It's under the Geometry tab. You might have to type in creatormath.weebly.com to get there. And it says, copy the following problems into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with notes for those pages from Creator Math. Dot com. So here's what it looks like. Here's the home page of creatormath.weebly.com. You might have to type that into Google to find it. Go to the Geometry tab. That's where all the notes are. Pass by the vocabulary. You're going to need this vocabulary list for a lot of your practice problems, but pass by that down to the Table of Contents. It'll say Semester 2, Table of Contents. This should have been copied into your composition book a long time ago on pages 2 through 6. If not, you're going to do that now. And as we go down through the table of contents, which tells us where everything goes on which page. So here we have rigid motions review. This is lesson number one, reflections, translations. Here's the page number it goes on. Please don't use this video for the page number. Go to the actual table of contents. By the time you're watching this video, it'll probably be different. The notes will be here under this tab. The problems you're seeing here will be here, and a video lesson will be linked there. All right. With that said, let's see what kind of review problems they're giving us for uh, symmetry, reflections, translations, etc. It says, given points A, B, and C, and they're plotted to form a triangle, if reflected across the y-axis, the new point will be... If reflected across the y-axis, the new point will be. So, I'm not totally sure about this. Let's see what this question says. Let's try to plot out the points they've given us. So, here's A at negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, negative 9, 2, 1, 2. So, let's put a point here. This is A, negative 9, comma, 2. And negative 2, 2. So, negative 2, 2 would be here. So, this is B. And this is negative 2, comma, 2. And then C is negative 2, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 2, 7 right about here. Negative 2, comma, 7 is point C. And these connected make a triangle. This is at 2 high along here. So this thing's going, this line is parallel to the x-axis, right? This is x, this is y. So they want us, are plotted, to form triangle ABC. Fine, we've got triangle ABC, got it? If reflected across the y-axis, so here's the y, right? The new point will be. So this is interesting. I think it got cut off which point they're talking about. Let's just go ahead and figure it out. If you reflect this across, right, you go across the y-axis here, a point's going to show up 1, 2. point's going to show up here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is negative 9, 2, so this one's going to be 9, 2 here. And this one's just going to come across right here at 7 high and 2 this way. And you're going to get a reflection across the y-axis like this, and it's going to flip across. They gave us 9, comma 2 right here for the answer. So it looks like they're asking for, if reflected across the y-axis, the new point A will be... And it's going to be right here, and let's call it A prime. Okay, so A prime will be the new reflected point 9, comma 2 is going to be here. So let's go for A prime. That's where A would be if it flips across the, if it's reflected across the y-axis right there. All right, so they're not giving us too, background inform too much background information since it's a review unit. They're just jumping right into it. So let's see, given the points A, B, and C, it's the same one, are plotted. If reflected across the x-axis, the new point C will be. All right, well, this one they gave us the new point C. So let's go right up here. Let's reflect it across the x this time. So it's going to go this way, right? This is 2 up, 1, 2. It's going to go right here. That's the new B point. Um, and the C would be, if this is 7 up, this is now going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 down. And it's pretty good. I'm not perfect with my um, the placement of these things right here, but this is going to be two across. This one's going to come right here. So this is reflecting it across the x-axis now, the triangle shape, ABC. And it's not perfect, but I can see this one's reflected over to here. 
this one's going to be negative 2, negative 7. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this point here is going to be C prime. It's the new C. And it's going to be negative 2, comma, negative 7. All right, so, and here's the answer here, negative 2, negative 7. I'm okay with that. Not the best way to map it out, maybe, but it works. Given the points, the same points, again, are plotted to form triangle ABC if reflected across. Oh, so it's going to get a little bit messier. But now they want to take a Y, a line, Y equals X. Y equals X is up to the right at a 45 degree angle. This is Y equals X. And now we're flipping across this line this way. So if this one's at negative 2, 2, this one's going to be at 2, negative 2 right here. Which point do they ask us? This is point B. The new point B will be. So 2, negative 2. I already know I'm just going to do this one point. Negative 2 uh, plus 2 is out on the X and negative 2 on the Y. So 2, negative 2 right here. I'm just going to do that point B and let's call it B prime. Right? So they call it the new point B. I probably would have liked to have seen it called B prime. And it's just going to flip across. The hardest thing for students to get is to remember that this y equals x is a line up at a 45 degree angle. Why? Because the slope here is 1 and there's no y-intercept plus 0. Remember y equals mx plus b? So if m is 1, then you get y equals x. And if there's 0 for b, you just get y equals x. And that's a line up at a 45 degree angle right here. And I would say go to desmos.com and type it in to see how to graph that. But they want us to flip it across that line. And we're just going to go with point B, the easiest point they gave us. All right, so given the points again, this is interesting. They started with all the same graph, are plotted in the triangle ABC. If translated 3 to the right, the new point A will be. Well, here's point A. 3 to the right is just 1, 2, 3 would be right here. Let's make it an open dot here for a second, just so I can, I don't have a color. I should color it a different co color. But this would be minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, because it's 9 minus 3 is 6. So it's negative 6, 2. This is negative 6, comma, 2. So I'm not happy about how messy I'm getting. But negative 6, 2, right there. These aren't that hard. Let's see if they give us one more. Did they give us one more? Translated 2 to the left, the new point C will be, huh, okay. So here it looks like they're giving us the same points again. And now they're just taking C and they're going 2 to the left. If translated 2 to the left, the new point C will be. I'm not going to redraw it. Let me just go back here. So 2 to the left, here's point C. Point C is right now at negative 2, 7. And if you go 2 to the left, it's going to be at negative 4, 7. So, negative 4, 7. It is a review. It's pretty easy to see that, I guess. Probably shouldn't say that. The moment I say this is when it gets not easy to see. Here's the same thing. A, same points, again, are plotted to form a triangle ABC. If translated 2 down and 2 to the right, the new point B will be. The new point B will be. If 2 down and 2 to the right. So, here's B here. 2 down would take us back to the x-axis, because see how it's too high? So 2 down and 2 to the right would be right at the origin here. That would be at 0, 0. Would be the new point B. Yep, 0, 0, the origin. So I'm okay with that so far. Um, maybe not the best, but it'll work for the moment. Which of the following is not symmetrical if divided in half about the vertical axis? So a square shape, a rectangular shape, and a heart shape. And when they say a heart shape, right, if you draw a perfect heart shape, divide it in half, and then fold over one side on the other, and I didn't draw it perfectly, right, it should line up with the other. A square divided right in half, you should take one side, fold it on the other. It should be right on top of it. And they also give us a rectangle. If a rectangle is divided right in half and one side folded onto the other, this should be a square draw a little bit more like a square there. That's why this looks a little bit more like a rectangle. It would be right on top. So these are all symmetrical. But the human body is the interesting one. If you cut a human body right in half, not that we're going to, but you can think about it, right? Uh, even the heart is off-center. 
and other body parts are off-center, and we know that humans grow imperfectly, right? We are not symmetrical beings in terms of what they're talking about in geometry, where I can exactly fold over half that shape, and it exactly lines up with the other side. Make this a little bit smaller, right? So it can be a little bit more believable. So the human body is the part that is not symmetrical if divided in half, and about the vertical axis, this being the vertical axis, up and down. Given the following graph, if the original is on the left, identify the rigid motion. So this is the original. We're starting with this. We're ending up with this. Notice that the whatever this person's holding in their hand is now on the other side. So this thing is being reflected across the y-axis right here. It's the y-axis being reflected across the y-axis. Reflection. Given the following reflection, if the original is on the left, identify the line of symmetry. So this is what we just did. It looks at the same distance here than here. They don't give us anything to tell us not. So the fact that it's the same distance, just eyeballing it, we're going to say the y-axis is its axis of reflection. And they call it the line of symmetry is fine too because it's symmetrical about that line. If you flipped one over about that line, almost like turning the page of a book and that being the spine, it would be exactly on top of the other image. Given the following graph, if the original is on the left, this is the original, identify the rigid motion. So this too looks like a reflection about the y-axis, reflection. Are they then going to ask me which axis or line of symmetry? Yep, line of symmetry, y-axis again, because it's being flipped right across that y-axis. I see a trend here. Given the following compound rigid motion, if the original is on the left, so we're starting with this one, what two motions have occurred? I would argue there's a reflection, because notice how the image that is being held in the hand is now on the opposite side, and then I would argue a translation. So either a reflection and translation, but always when we have, not always, but most, a lot of times when we have a translation and a reflection to a compound rigid motion, right, things can go in different order. In other words, we could have translated it down here first, right, and then reflected it. So either a reflection and a translation or a translation and a reflection. So I'm okay with this. I definitely don't see a rotation anywhere. I don't see a dilation. That's making it bigger or smaller and not a rotation. So these are out, out, out. Given the following compound rigid motion, if a reflection has occurred and the original is on the left, what is the line of symmetry? I would argue the line of symmetry is the y-axis because it's being flipped over this way with now this thing on the other side of the person here, right? This image helps us see it's being reflected about the y-axis. Given the following compound rigid motion, if a translation has occurred and the original is on the left, what is the potential description of movement? Well, I think either we moved it down or we moved it over like we discussed before. So slide to the right and then slide down, slide up, no. Slide down then to the left, no. Slide diagonally down to the right, no. Slide to the right and then slide down, hmm. So we already said this was a reflection and then a translation or a translation and then a reflection. So I would argue it would be a, I don't like any of these. I would like, in fact, I might like this one. Slide down first, then reflect. Slide down, then reflect about the y-axis. Okay, so that's the one I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick this one. Slide down, then reflect about the y-axis, right? Look for that one. I'll fix it by the time you guys get to it. Given the following graph, if the original is on the left, identify the rigid motion. 
So in this case, I do think it is a translation and a translation, or it could have been a straight translation that way, right? A lot of times we like to translate in a Y and an X. It's a little bit cleaner, but we could have gone in a diagonal movement here, and it would have been defined by those two. So translation is what I like. Given the following, the originals on the left, identify the ridge of motion. It looks like it's just a straight translation. Just slide it over to the right. The sail has not flipped sides. I don't see any reflection or rotation. All right, given the following graph, the original's here. So identify the ridge of motion. I would say it's a reflection this way about the X axis. So reflection. Given the following translation, if the original's here, what has occurred? A slide to the right, then slide down. I'll take you up on that. Slide up, no. Slide down, then to the left, no. Slide di diagonally down to the right. Um, this one's a maybe, but I'd much rather go with the slide to the right and then down. I'd rather go with this, and I'm not sure I like that. It's a little bit too much of a mislead there. Given the following translation, if the original is on the left, identify the movements. So slide to the right. I'm going to go with that. I don't see anything else happening. It's not up. It's not down. It's not diagonally. Nope. 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 These are pretty basic, if you ask me, for a review. I guess pretty good for a review. Given the following reflection, if the original is on the upper left, identify the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is the x-axis here because this thing is flipping this way across that x-axis. Oh, finally. Given the following graph, if the original's on the left, identify the ridge of motion. So it looks like we are rotating this way. And I would argue it's about the origin. The point of rotation is the origin. So I would argue this is a rotation right here. Okay. If the original is on the lower left, identify the line of symmetry. And I would call it the point of rotation. I would call this the point of rotation, point of rotation. And I would say it's the origin here, just because this looks like it has been rotated, not, hmm. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Although if you rotate this, hmm, I'm not totally sure of this one. Look at this, the line y equals negative x. So here's their line, y equals negative x. Yeah, this might be a reflection. So now I, I kind of like this, reflection about the negative x. I'm going to go with this one, reflection about the negative x, and I'm going to go back and make this a reflection about that. The, if you rotated this this way 90 degrees right here, it would be down on this side like this. It would rotate right to here, I would believe, not all the way over to this one. You're going to have to reflect it about that y equals negative x line to go ahead and get it over into the first quadrant here. So they went from kind of really easy, and this one got a little bit more challenging. Make sure you're on the right lesson. This is Geometry Semester 2. It's a review unit on rigid motions. It's lesson number one, symmetry, reflections, translations, etc. practice. And it's on creatormath.com under the Geometry tab.